Of course. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Thank you very much for joining us. Today we are looking at an uh, overview of chapter two of Canto Two, and we have a great fortune of Shruti who will be reciting the English, the Sanskrit. And hopefully we have um, young Shavi who will be reciting the um, English. So this um, chapter is named, entitled mm -hmm. Lord in the Heart. And uh, Shruti, you're welcome to do any invocation you like. Huh? Uh, okay, Pramuchi. Uh, just uh, the Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Shri Shuka Uvacha. Evam Puradharanayatmayonir. Nashtam smritim pratyavarudhya tushtam Tathasa sarjeda mamukha drishtir Yathapyayat pragyavasaya buddhi Hare Krishna everyone. Sorry, young Shaivi is not here Prabhuji, it's Shaivi's mom here. <laughs> oh man, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's not around, Prabhuji. I hope it's okay if I read it. Sri Sukadev Goswami said, Formerly, prior to the manifestation of the cosmos, Lord Brahma, by meditating on the Virat Rup, regained his lost consciousness by appeasing the Lord. Thus, he was able to rebuild the creation as it, were bef as it was before. Shabdasya hi brahmana esha pantha yannam abhirdhyayati dhira parthai pari brahmam statra navinda terthan maya maeva sanaya shayanaha. The way of presentation of the Vedic sounds is so bewildering that it directs the intelligence of the people to meaningless things like the heavenly kingdoms. The conditioned souls hover in dreams of such heavenly illusory pleasures, but actually they do not relish any tangible happiness in such places. <laughs> For this reason, the enlightened person should endeavor only for the minimum necessities of life while in the world of names. He should be intelligently fixed and never endeavor for unwanted things being competent to perceive practically that all such endeavors are merely hard labor for nothing. This is a really amazing verse, uh, which helps us uh, to, to try to detach ourselves from the craziness of this world. And we'll talk a little bit more about this verse uh, when we do a, a, our little summary. Satyam kshitau kim kashipo prayasait bahau svasiddhe shupau barhanai kim Satyanjalau kim purudhana patriya digval kaladau sati kim dukulai When there are ample earthly flats to lie on, what is the necessity of cots and beds? When one can use his own arms, what is the necessity of a pillow? When one can use the palms of his hands, what is the necessity of varieties of utensils? When there is ample covering or the skin of trees, what is the necessity of clothing? <laughs>
Are there no torn clothes lying on the common road? Do the trees, which exist for maintaining others, no longer give alms in charity? Do the rivers, being dried up, no longer supply water to the thirsty? Are the caves of the mountains now closed? Or above all, does the Almighty Lord not protect the fully surrendered souls? When, why then do the learn, learned sages go to flatter those who are intoxicated by hard-earned wealth? Evam Sachitti Svata Eva Siddha Atma Priyortho Bhagavan Anandaha Tam Nir Brutonia Tatho Bhajeta Samsara Hetu Paramashayatra. Thus, being fixed, one must render service unto the super soul situated in one's own heart by his omnipotency. Because he is the almighty personality of Godhead, eternal and unlimited, he is the ultimate goal of life. And by worshiping him, one can end the cause of the conditioned state of existence. Kastam tvanadritya paranu chintam mrite pashun rite pashunas Nrite Pashun Asati Nama Kuriat Pashyan Janam Patitam Vaitaranyam Swakar Majan Parita Panjushanam. Who else but the gross materialists will neglect such transcendental thought and take to the non permanent names only, seeing the mass of people fallen in the river of suffering as the consequence? of accruing the result of their own work. Thank you very much. This is really an amazing part of the Shrimad Bhagavatam. Uh, oops, wrong one. <laughs> so, there's one second. Okay. Detachment in the world of names, and particularly temporary names, permanent names like the name of God, they're the ones we should be attached to. So Sukadev Goswami, who is the uh, speaker in this, uh, this Bhagavatam is a um, conversation, a discussion between Parikshit Maharaj and Sukadev Goswami. In summary, Parikshit Maharaj was cursed to die in seven days. And he was a king. And instead of lamenting um, and making final plans uh, for material things, he decided to relieve everything, went to the Ganga, and he sat waiting for the saints to come. And he asked them a question. What do I do now? What is the duty of a man about to die? And Sukadev Goswami answers the question. It takes him seven days to answer that one question. <laughs> Such an important question. So he stresses detachment from fruitive work. Fruitive work means uh, working for some benefit by reframing from over endeavor in this world of names. And Srila Prabhupada has uh, translated this uh, work, uh, Bhagavatam, and he's also written a purport uh, for every verse. So th this is one of the purports uh, or part of a purport. Very, very interesting. The whole world, whole material creation is a jugglery of names only. In fact, it is nothing but a bewildering creation of matter, like earth, water, fire. The buildings, the furniture, the cars, the bungalows, the mills, factories, industries, peace, war, or even the highest benediction of material science, the highest perfection of material science, namely atomic energy, and electronics, uh, internet, Google, <laughs> are all simply bewildering names of material elements with their concomitant reactions of the three modes. So this is quite complex to understand, but basically these names are just temporary names. And uh, all of these things keep changing uh, because there's no permanency in this material world. And then Sukadev Goswami explains, look, why are we endeavoring so hard 
for simple necessities of life? Are there no clothes, torn clothes lying on the common road? Do the trees which exist for maintaining others no longer give alms in charity? Do the rivers being dried up no longer supply water to the thirsty? Are, there, are the caves of the mountains now closed? <laughs> of course, we're used to a certain standard of living in the West especially, and all of these things are very impractical for us, no doubt about it. But the whole point is try to reduce our uh, dependence on material, uh, have our, on our dependence for happiness in material items. This is the point. Try to reduce our <clears throat> reliance uh, or, or uh, reduce our happiness that we think we're getting by associating with material things. Or above all, <clears throat> does the Almighty Lord not protect the fully surrendered souls? <laughs> Why then do the learned sages go to flatter those who are intoxicated by hard earned wealth? So we have this experience uh, over the years. Um, you know, we, we've been we always trying to do some some sort of religious activity. And sometimes we, we ask uh, people for help. And we usually find that those who are the wealthiest are the stingiest. <laughs> and those who um, have hardly anything give so much um, in accordance to what, what they have. Now, the thing is, we have to understand that we're not beggars um, begging for uh, things from people to do really sector. We're not beggars. The Lord, he's already, he's the master of the goddess of fortune. Uh, so he can provide anything. But by the Lord's mercy, we have the opportunity to serve him. And we are very, very, very fortunate, uh, I would say extremely, extremely fortunate. And we have some incredible support around us. Uh, I'll give you one example. Just the other day, we asked people for help with um, giving um, rations of uh, grains and rice and dal to needy families in India because of COVID. Some families have hardly anything. And uh, we asked for like 300, 3,000 packages in total which would cost something like uh, 20,000 pounds or something. And somebody came up and said, yes, I'll sponsor 2,500 of them. Don't have to worry about that. Uh, you can find enough money for the rest. So the other day, there was 17 and a half thousand pounds put in our bank account, in the temple's bank account. So <sighs> this world is uh, amazing uh, in, in many respects. So, but the main point of this section is to try to reduce our reliance on material things and try to increase our surrender onto the Supreme Lord because he provides everything. Okay, so we carry on. Pradesha matram purusham basantam chatur bhujam kanjaratangashanka gadadharam dharanayas maranti. Others conceive of, of the personality of Godhead residing within the body, the region of the heart, and measuring only eight inches with four hands carrying a lotus, a wheel of a chariot, a conch shell and a club separately. Prasanna Vaktram Nalinaya Tekshanam Kadamba Kinjal Kapishanga Vasasam Lasan Maharat Nahiran Mayangadam Suran Maharat Nakirita Kundalam His mouth expresses his happiness. His eyes spread like the petals of a lotus, and his garments, yellowish like the saffron of a kadamba flower, are bedecked with valuable jewels. His ornaments are all made of gold, 
set with jewels and he wears a glowing headdress and earrings. Unni drahrit pangaja karni kanaye Yogeshwarastha pita pada pallavam Shri lakshanam kaustu bharatna kandharam Amlana lakshmyavana malayachitam His lotus feet are placed over the worlds of the lotus-like hearts of great mystics. On his chest is the Kaustu jewel engraved with a beautiful calf and there are other jewels on his shoulders. His complete torso is garlanded with fresh flowers. Vibhushitam me kharayangulikai Ahadhanairnu burakankaradhibi Snigdhamala kunchitanila kuntalair he is well decorated with an ornamental wreath about his waist and rings studded with valuable jewels on his fingers. His leglets, his bangles, his oil hair, curling with a bluish tint, and his beautiful smiling face are all very pleasing. Adina Lila Hasite Kranola said, Bruhanga Sam Suchita Gurya Nugraham Ekreta Chinta Yamina Nishwaram Yavan Manodhar and Yavatish Tate. The Lord's magnanimous pastimes and the glowing glancing of his smiling face are all indications of his extensive benedictions. One must therefore concentrate on this transcendental form of the Lord as long as the mind can be fixed on him by meditation. <laughs> The process of meditation should begin from the lotus feet of the Lord and progress to his smiling face. The meditation should be concentrated upon the lotus feet. Then the calves then the ties, and in this way, higher and higher, the more in mind, in the mind, becomes fixed upon the different parts of the limbs, one after another, the more the intelligence becomes perfect. Yavan <laughs> Vishweshware drashtari bhakti yoga Tavat staviya purushasya rupam Kriya vasane prayatas marita. Unless the gross materials materialist materialist del develops a sense of loving sofa service unto the Supreme Lord, the seer of both the transcendental and material world. He should remember or meditate upon the universal form of the Lord at the end of his prescribed duties. Wonderful reading. Uh, very good boy. Thank you so much. Now, okay. So this is part of the se um, section of the Bhagavatam. It talks about the process of meditation. When we are before the deities, how to meditate upon them. So we begin from the lotus feet of the Lord and progress to his smiling face slowly. The meditation should be concentrated upon the lotus feet, then the calves and the thighs, and in this way, higher and higher. The more the mind becomes fixed upon the different parts of the limbs, 
one after the other, the more the intelligence becomes purified. So Bhagavatam, or Shukadev Goswami is explaining how we um, can, when we're looking oh, upon the form, form of the Lord, uh, approach him. And we shouldn't directly look at the face straight away. We progress slowly from the feet upwards. So when we go to the temple and have darshan, this is one thing to remember very nicely, that uh, we can look at the lotus feet and appreciate them, and then look at the thighs and the calves, the thighs, and then stomach, and then the arm, chest, arms, uh, neck, uh, and then the face, and then the eyebrows, like that. It's the, it's the recommended way of, uh, or the etiquette, yeah, spiritual etiquette, how to uh, have darshan of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It purifies our intelligence. Okay. Sthiram sukham cha sadam asthito yatir yada jihasur dimam angalokam kale cha deshe cha mano na sajjayet prana niyachen manasajita suho. O king, whenever the yogi desires to leave this planet of human beings, he should not be perplexed about the proper time or place, but should comfortably sit without being disturbed and regulating the life air to control the sense by the mind. Manasva buddhya malaya niyamya. Kshetratnya etam ninayet tamatmani atmanam atmanya varudhya dhiro labdho pashantir virameta krityat. Thereafter, the yogi should merge his mind by his unalloyed intelligence into the living entity and then merge the living entity into the super self. And by doing this, the fully satisfied living entity becomes situated in the supreme stage of satisfaction so that he ceases from all other activities. Nayatra kalo nimisham param parah prabhu kuto nu deva jagatam ya ishire nayatra sattvam narajastamascha in that transcendental state of Labdhu Pashanti, there is no supremacy of devastating time, which controls even the celestial demigods who are em empowered to rule over mundane creatures. And what to speak of the demigods themselves? Nor is there the mode of material goodness, nor passion, nor ignorance, nor even the false ego, nor the material casual ocean, causal ocean, nor the material nature. Param padam vaishnavam amanantitad yaneti neti tyatad utsishrit. Kshavaha Visrajya Dauratmyam Ananya Sauhrata Hrado Pagurkhyan Hapadam Pade Pade The transcendentalists desire to avoid everything godless for they know that supreme situation in which everything is related with the Supreme Lord Vishnu Therefore, a pure devotee is in absolute harmony with the Lord does not create perplexities, but worships the lotus feet of the Lord at every moment, taking them into his heart. Itham monistu paramedya vasthito vitnyana drigvi surandhita shayaha 
ಸ್ವಪಾರ್ಶ್ನಾಪೀಡ್ಯ ಗುಡ್ಗುದಂ ತೋ ನಿಲಂ ಸ್ಥಾನು ಸತ್ಸೂನ್ನಮೇಜಿತ ಕ್ಲಮಃ by the strength of scientific knowledge one should be well situated in absolute realization and thus be able to extinguish all material desires one should then give up the material body by blocking the air hole through which stool is evacuated with the heel of one's foot and by lifting the life air from one place to another in the six primary places the heart from the chest to the chest and from the from the to the roof of the palate he should sort out the proper place of the intelligence tasmad bhruvare tasmad bhruvarantaram unnayet niruddha sap ಸ್ಥಿತ್ವಾಂಗತೀಯೋಗ and then blocking the seven outlets of the air life air la- life air. he should maintain his aim for going back home back to godhead if he is completely free from all desires from material enjoyment he should then reach the celebrable hole and give up his material connection having gone to the supreme wonderful reading um uh by katha is it katan yes prabhu ji it's katan yeah, very good and shavi amazing amazing thank you so much thank you prabhu ji <laughs> all right so uh where are we okay so this part of the bhagavatam uh, 15 to 21 when the yogi desires to leave he should not be perplexed about the time and place he should sit comfortably and through meditation push the life air up from the navel to the heart and then chest and then further to the top of his head how to leave the body control the senses and meditate on the super soul in the heart he should then reach the cerebral hall so where is that so that's right at the top of the skull there's a soft part on the top of the skull and the yogi he's very powerful he can move the atma all the way up to that top of that skull and from there he can depart to the spiritual world now this is a rare personality we are not in that caliber um however by performing bhakti yoga by performing bhakti yoga which means you're connecting with the supreme personality of godhead you don't even have to worry about this process of of uh, meditation and that we will explain in due course of time why we don't have to worry about this yadi prasya ಯದಿ ಪ್ರಯಾಸ್ಯನೃಪಾರಮೇಷ್ಯಂ ವೈಹಾಯ ಸಾನಾಭುತಯದ್ವಿಹಾರಂ ಅಷ್ಟಾಧಿಪತ್ಯ ಗುಣಸನ್ನಿವಾಯ ಸಹೈವ ಗಚ್ಛೇಲ್ಮನಸೇಂದ್ರಿಯ ಹೌ ಕಿಂಗ್ 
if a yogi maintains a desire for improvement on material enjoyments like transference to top the topmost planet Brahmaloka or the achievement of the eightfold perfections traveling out of space with the Vahayasas or a situation in one of the millions of plants that he has to take away with him the material molded mind and senses. Yogeshwaranam gati mahurantar bahestri lokya pavanantar atmanam na karma bhistam gati mahapnubanti vidyata po yoga samadhi bhajam The transcendentalists are concerned with the spiritual body. As such, by the strength of the devotional service, austerities, mystic power, and transcendental knowledge, their movements are unrestricted within and beyond the material worlds. The fruitive workers or the gross materialists can never move in such an unrestricted manner. Vaishwanaramyati vihaya sagatah Sushumnaya brahma pathena yo shochisha Vidhuta kalpotha harir budastat Prayati chakram rupashai shumaram Okay, when such mystic 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 passes over the Milky Way by the illuma, illuminating illuminating sasum, sushumna. Sasumna, to reach the highest planet Bro, Brahmaloka. Brahmaloka. He goes goes to Vishwana, the planet of deity of fire. When he becomes completely cleansed of all contaminants, contaminations, contaminations and thereafter, yeah. he still goes higher to the circle of Sisamara Shishumara to relate with Lord Hari, the personality of Godhead. Tadvishwanabhim Tvativartya Vishnur Aniyasa Viradenatma Naikaha Namaskritam Brahma Vidam Upaiti Kalpa Yushoyad Vibudhara Mante This Shishumar is the pivot of the turning for, of the complete universe and it is called the navel of Vishnu, Gar Garbha Dakshai Vishnu. The yogi alone goes beyond the circle of Shishumar and attains the planet Maharlok, where purified saints like Bhrugu enjoy a duration of life of <laughs> solar years, some million solar years. This planet is worshipable even for saints who are transcendentally situated. It's 4.3 billion solar years. That's one day of Brahma. <laughs> wow. Atho anantasya mukhana lena dandahyamanam sanirikshya vishwam niryati siddheshwara yoshta dhishnyam yadvai paradhyam tadupara vishthyam At the time of the final devastation, one of the one of the of the complete universe, the end of the duration of the Brahma's life, a flame of fire emanates from the mount of Ananta, 
from the bottom of the universe. The yogi sees all the planets of the universe burning to ashes, and thus he reached for Satyaloka by airplanes used by the great purified souls. The duration of life in Satyaloka is calculated to be 15 trillion, 480 billion years. <laughs> <laughs> and on Sunday, we're going to go through Vedic time. So have some calculators ready. Nayatra shoku najara namrityur Natir na chodhve garate kutaschit Yachit tatodah kripaya nidam vidam Duranta dukha prabhavanu darshanat. In that planet of Satyalok, there is neither bereavement, nor old age, nor death. There is no pain of any kind. And therefore, there are no anxieties. Save that sometimes, due to, un due to consciousness, there is a feeling of compassion for those unaware of the process of devotional service who are subjected to unsurpassable miseries in the material world. Tato vishesham pratipadya nirbhaya stenatmana punalamurti ratvaran jyotir mayo vaya mukitya kare vayatmanakam brihatatma ringam After reaching Satyalok, the devotee is specifically able to be incorporated fearlessly by the subtle body in an identity similar to that of the cross body, and one after another gradually attains stages of existence from earthly to watery, fiery, glowing and airy, until he reaches the ethereal stage. Grane na gandham rasane na vairasam rupam chadrishtya shvasanam tvachaiva shrotre na chopetya na bhogunatvam prane na chakotim upaiti yogi. The devotee thus surpasses the subtle objects of different senses like aroma by smelling, the palate by tasting vision by seeing forms, touch by contacting, the vibrations of the ear by ethereal identification, and the sense organs by material activities. Sabhuta sukshmendriya sannikarsham manomayam devamayam vikaryam samsadhya gatya sahate nayati the devotee, thus surpassing the gross and the subtle forms of coverings, enters the plane of egoism. And in that status, he merges the material modes of nature, ignorance and passion in this point of neutralization and thus reaches egoism in goodness. After all, after this, all egoism is merged in the Mahatattva and he comes to the point of pure self realization. Only the purified soul can attain the perfection of associating with the personality of Godhead in complete bliss and satisfaction in his constitutional state. Whoever is able to renovate such devotional perfection is never again attracted by this material world and he never returns. Wonderful. This is really an amazing part of the Bhagavatam. Um, on the way to Lo Brahma Lok, the Bhakti Yogi passes over 
the Milky Way to the circle of the Shishumara, which is the navel of Lord Vishnu. He finally attains Satyalok, where there is no fear or death. I will talk about Satyalok in a minute. We can show you exactly where it is. At the end, he goes beyond the covering, coverings of the elements to associate with the Supreme Personality of Godhead in the spiritual world. Only the purified soul can attain the perfection of associating with the Personality of Godhead in complete bliss and satisfaction in his constitutional state. And what's the constitutional state? Spirit soul. Whoever is able to renovate such devotional perfection is never again attracted by this material world and he never returns. So let's have a quick look. This is uh, the, the material world. So just to give you an idea, uh, this is the whole creation. This is the material world here. So just going back to the material world where we live. And this is just one universe. There's millions of universes. So what happens is when the yogi passes away, he, he goes up gradually and um, he goes through these different heavenly, there's 14 planetary systems. And we live in the center, uh, Bu, Bulok. And then there's the heavenly planets and then there's different other planets. And finally there's Satyalok where Lord Brahma lives. And the average life there is 15 trillion, 480 billion years of, of a yogi. And then the Bhakta Yogi, he will pass through these different penetrations of the universe. And where will he go? And then there's the Shishumara, which we won't worry about too much at this point. Where will he go? Beyond this material world are, is the spiritual world. And there's different aspects of the spiritual world. And the spiritual world is three quarters of the creation. One quarter or one small part of the creation is the material world. So this is uh, Devi Dham, material world where we live. Mahesh Dham, which is beyond this world, where Lord Shiva and his associates live. And beyond Mahesh Dham is Vaikuntha, where Lord Vishnu lives. Beyond Vaikuntha. So the, there's a Brahma Jyoti, which is like the effulgence of the Lord. We'll talk about that another time. Beyond Vaikuntha is Ayodhya. And beyond Ayodhya is Golok Bindavan which is considered to be, even within the spiritual realm, the highest of all. So this is just giving a little idea. Uh, we're going to go through it a little bit uh, on Sunday again. Uh, not too much detail, but a little bit at least. So we've got a few verses to do. Um, we normally, <clears throat> we, we'll finish the chapter, otherwise it gets a little too confusing. So, and just double click it. Ete Shruti Tenendra Paved Gite Tvaya Bhi Prushte Chasanat Chasanat Necha Yevai Pura Brahman Ahatushta Aradhito Bhagavan Vasudevah Your Majesty Maharaj Parikshit know that all that I have described in reply to your proper inquiry is just according to the version of the Vedas. And it is the eternal truth. This was described personally by Lord Krishna unto Brahma, with whom the Lord was satisfied upon being properly worshipped. For those who are wandering in the material universe, there is no more auspicious means of deliverance than what is aimed at in the direct devotional service of Lord Krishna. Bhagavan Brahma Kartsnena Triran Viksha Manishaya Tadadhyavasyat Kutastho 
The great personality Brahma, with great attention and concentration of the mind, studied the Vedas three times, and after scrutinizingly examining them, he ascertained that attraction for the Supreme Personality of Godhead Sri Krishna is the highest perfection of religion. Bhagavan Sarva Bhuteshu Lakshita Swatmana Hari Drishyair Buddhya Dibhir Drashta Lakshanair Anumapakai the personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna, is in every living being along with the individual soul. And this fact is perceived and hypothesized in our acts of seeing and taking help from the intelligence. Tasma Charvatmana Rajan Hari Sarvatra Sarvada Shrota Vyakirtita Vyascha O King, it is therefore essential that every human being hereabout glorify and remember the Supreme Lord, the Personality of Godhead, always and every. Pibanti Bhagavata Atmana Satam Kathamritam Shavana Puteshu Sambritam Punanti te vishaya, Punanti te vishaya vidushita shayam, Brajanti tacharana saroru hantikam. Those who drink through oral reception, fully filled with the nectarine message of Lord Krishna, the beloved of the devotees purify the pollution aim of life known as material enjoyment and thus go back to Godhead to the lotus feet of him, the personality of Godhead, Hare Krishna. Hare, Hare Krishna. Krishna, well done, yeah. fantastic. And thank you, Shruti. So, some, some tough verses there. <laughs> <laughs> very, very, very tough. There were, there were so, so many tongue twisters. <laughs> yeah, well done. Glad you're here. <laughs> so the no, final no, part no. is really uh, Sukadev Goswami gives the punchlines, you know. After scrutinizing <laughs> the Vedas three times, Lord Brahma, who's got such an incredible intelligence and long life, he's understood that attraction for the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna is the highest perfection of religion. So if Brahma can do that, if Brahma says that, then that's a really good authority for us to follow. Therefore, every human being should hear about, glorify, and remember the Supreme Lord always and everywhere to go back to Godhead, to the Lord's lotus feet. Srimad Bhagavatam, Chapter 2, Canto 2, Ki Jai. Are there any, um, any questions um, before we go to the Kadashi Satsang? Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Uh, Prabhuji, in the summary, I think uh, from I think from seven uh, verses one to seven, yeah, there is one statement. I'm not sure if we have to read between the lines in that one. <laughs> Go on. So here it says, or above all, does the Almighty Lord not protect the fully surrendered souls? Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, could you please uh, help me understand? Um, yeah. You know, I mean, I understand that um, the about thing, you know, is trying to build a context, probably of as we progress in Kali Yuga. Uh, I don't know if uh, I am thinking or relating it correct, but uh, uh, is there, I mean, will there be a time when, you know, Lord will not come to protect uh, the surrendered souls? No, what this, is what, this is what he's emphasizing, that look, you don't have to spend all your time looking after your material necessities, right? That's why he's building up. Yes, you're right, he's building up to it. Are there not torn clothes lying on the road? You don't have to buy new clothes, right? Are there not caves in the mountains? Are they closed now? No, they're not. 
you don't have to have luxurious apartments or houses to live in, right? What um, Sukadev Goswami is saying is that we try to reduce our material necessities as much as possible. Because the Lord, does he not protect the fully surrendered souls? He always does. Does he not protect those who are not surrendered? Yes, he does. You don't see the elephants suited and booted and going to work to get their food. No, but they get their food. They're not deprived. The Lord looks after everyone. So Shukadev Goswami is building up our confidence that we can focus not just on the material thing. Yes, of course, we live in this world. We have duties to fulfill. We have certain standards of living that we're used to, accustomed to. And it's very difficult for us to now adjust after so many years. But what he's trying to say is, look, don't worry. Don't focus so much on the material that you forget the spiritual. The spiritual is far more important because in this name, this world of names, uh, the material things, they'll keep changing their soul form and substance. But, and that's temporary. What you've got to focus on is what is permanent, what is in your ultimate good, and that is the spiritual realm. So that's what Sukadev Goswami is trying to give the confidence to Parikshit Ma, to us really, that look, the Supreme Lord will always protect you. Don't worry if you're thinking that, oh my God, I haven't got enough. No, he'll always protect. He'll always give. He'll give us, he gives to those who doesn't, don't even pray to him. The animals, for example, they have no consciousness of God as such, but they're protected. They're looked after. They're not for, short of food, right? So that's the context. Is yeah, got the context. Yeah, got the context. Yeah, thank you, Prabhuji. Okay, no, thank you so much. Thank you for asking. Very important to ask because otherwise uh, others will have the same question as well. Thank you, Puna Mataji. Anybody else? Anything else? Okay, thank you so much. Thank you for joining. I hope um, those who've come for the first time, I uh, hope that's, this is not, um, this has been okay and uh, interesting. Uh, if you are able to, please uh, continue to join us. It, the Bhagavatam, there's absolutely nothing like it. It's the most extraordinary uh, scripture which gives so much information. And we're back on Sunday, uh, of course, for those who join on Sundays. And uh, Sunil, I've put you in the group so that uh, you are aware of the timings. Sunday is at one uh, quarter to one till about two o'clock. Thank you so much. Shimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai.